Hi, Anti Society. Welcome back to the Anti Social Planet. Today, we are getting into episode two of Tower of God anime. And I am so excited for this because we are finally getting into some of the, the main cast. I feel like the first episode is obviously setting up a lot of stuff, right? We're introducing not only our protagonist, but specifically Bomb and Rachel, and why that dynamic is so important to the motivation of why Bomb does anything in the series, and also setting up some mechanics of what the tower is going to be. Also, making sure that we know that Bomb is special. TM is our shonen protagonist, right? But now we're getting into introducing all these characters that are going to be so important to the rest of the story, including my sweet boy Rock. If you don't know how much I love that boy, you're just gonna have to see some of my reactions to the webtoon in which I lose my mind over him on a consistent basis. I'm very excited to get to see some of them in action, in anime, and get to really see what they're gonna do with the characters, right? It's one thing to read them and see in my mind's eye of like how I think they would behave and act. And it's another thing to have specific mannerisms and voice acting and soundtrack that is there to encapsulate what that character is. Let's get into the episode. In three, two, one, go. Ooh, we're just jumping right into the opener. I'm going to try really hard not to get, like, distracted by the stray kids of it all. I mean, specifically Benny. So... I think it's so interesting to have these, like, stark, like, all-black panels with the writing on them. Because it's, like, breaking up the flow of the animation. It has, like, this jarring effect, which I think is really interesting, like, design-wise. Because you have all these motifs with Bum. And then you have these moments of like breaking up that those motifs with this like all black screen with the writing on it. Bob looks really tired in that one panel too, where he turns back, which I think is a. Uh telling to what we're going to be dealing with. He hasn't had to think about it before, but now he definitely does. Gosh, I don't like that line in context of what I know about her. Saying, like, you would fight for me. The confusion is fair enough. <laughs> I think he's immediately like, huh. I wonder how much that's worth. <laughs> oh, look at the chibi! Yes, you are. <laughs> I love that line with us like roll calling being like hey some strong and interesting people there's some of those here oh. 
Yeah. Be interested in that. <laughs> and thus sealed his fate. <laughs> This is by Sander being like. <laughs> she is, yes. Definitely questionable. He's already interesting, right? He's definitely some kind of exception. Oh, his little face! A sweet little jelly bean. Beginning of the series. I mean, looks like a jelly bean. Would, <laughs> would kill you if given the chance. <laughs> Looks like a jelly bean would be a, is a jelly bean. <laughs> I mean, Shibitsu has his, mo his moments, but ooh, I was gonna say we're gonna have a shonen dramatic jump moment. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> that's when he just catches him and throws him at someone else. Probably not. Can we talk about how Bob looks literally like a dog <laughs> in that panel? Like, and then be like, I belong to her? Like, it's the, the, the toxicity is <laughs> all over the place. <sighs> Can we talk about how his face is in shadow? Look, I trust my boy now. But I know what he's like. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. He gets more and more interesting the more time he spends in the tower. Speaking of, you said his name. Summoned him. <laughs> I like how it's the only reason they're not fighting each other. Like, y'all are friends eventually. But the reason they're not actively trying to kill each other is because if they did, they would be disqualified.
I think that is so interesting, though, that they're like, you're probably going to have to team up with the person you were just fighting. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, y'all are best friends now. We don't have time for exposition. We got a time limit. Yep. Just running down the clock. <laughs> like, he immediately stops ranting. He's just like, yes. Yep. I like how they just, by force, they're like, we're best friends now. <laughs> Ooh. I love the chaos. He's still like, fight me! <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh. Does he need a banana? Chocolate bar works too. We know he likes his bananas though. <laughs> I love how he just likes snacks. <laughs> so sweet boy. <laughs> They'll get over it, sort of. Just give him a second. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> Look at him with the snaggies. I love this art style too. When they're like, here's some lore about the structure of the tower, how the tower works. And it's done in these like pastel drawings. Uh, 
Everybody brace themselves. <laughs> I just. Uh, I love how, like, Lorraine is just, like, unfazed. Yep. No one ever said that the tower was fair. Oh, I love this. I'm waiting for the reveal moment. There it is. Everyone was like worried about him and he's just like, I'm sorry. I, uh, the test didn't work on me. Sorry. For the inconvenience. Oh, now he's your black turtle. <laughs> yep. Those who know, know. She stands out. Oh. Oh, he's such a cutie. <laughs> I'm just waiting it out. You got this. I believe it. <laughs> <She's> so... <laughs> I like that this is the visual for all the exposition. Just the chaos. Uh... Oh. Confidence isn't enough. <laughs> There's my boy, too. <laughs> I love that he's always in nap mode. What a mood. Yes.
Prove it. Good luck with that. That was pretty cool visuals. And sometimes that's not enough. I say, like, I don't know that he's going to be one of the main characters, but, like, he worked for it. Uh-oh. Foreshadowing. Gosh, he's just, like... Immediately, he's like, these are my friends. And I'm just like, oh, be so careful. I do love the next test. I feel like I'm just being reminded of all of like, the points where I'm just like, oh, I love that part of the story. <laughs> I'm excited. I know the story. I know that I know what's going to happen. And I know that, that, that at some point it's going to crush my soul. I know what's going on. But I also, I really like the humor being put into it because there are funny parts of the series. There is some great slapstick, especially with specific characters that have a little more physicality to just the way that they present themselves, right? Like Ruck and Shibisu. Those two characters just have a lot of physicality to the way that they express themselves, which lends really well to comedic beats but i also love that they're using certain things in it stylistic things to show that humor even like the chibi <laughs> effects we have that bomb every once in a while or kun they're putting in these kind of like chibi moments to add in some of that more lighthearted comedy bits of it i personally enjoy that because i like myself a chibi i can get why maybe that wouldn't be for everybody especially with a shonen especially as the series gets progressively more and more intense higher stakes and stuff but i really like that effect i think that it just adds a little stylistic interest some comedy i think it externalizes some of the internal stuff with bomb i feel like later on in the series with who bomb is like how he changes having that switch might not fit as well but i think really early on at where he is now where he's very much this innocent wide-eyed very childlike character that i think that it makes a lot of sense to have that be part of how his character expresses itself as opposed to later on in the series and of course rock is team chibi all the way so it makes sense for him to have some of those comedic beats with him where the style kind of gets simplified but i do like just getting to have a good laugh at this point because i do know that other stuff is going to be happening to see some of the more lightheartedness especially in this episode where i feel like it was a lot of exposition we're still setting things up and making sure that the foundation that the audience needs to know of like how the system works before we get into the actual test is is there and we can introduce all these characters because there's so many characters in the series and you really have to make sure that you understand the basics of who they are and what motivates them because they all have their own reasons 
ones to be going on this journey and their own power sets and abilities that they're using. And they're going to be here for a while. So you need to set them up in the right way. So being able to counter some of that exposition with these comedic beats, I think is really nice, especially when we had the part where the Roro was explaining irregulars and how they function in the tower. And then we had Shibitsu struggling his way through trying to get through the Shinsu, right? Having that exposition whilst showing that comedic, very physical representation of that comedy for the visual, I think is a really good mix of that, especially since you can't just put a whole panel of text like you can in the webtoon where someone can skim through at their own pace. You have to control that pacing in the animated form. So you need to have something there that is progressing the visual plot and storytelling whilst also having the world building that you need there on the audio side and mixing those things together. I think so far they're doing a really good job. I think that's going to depend on how we continue in the adaptation. But so far, I think that it's legitimately a good adaptation. I think that there are certain things that have been shifted a little bit, but that's just the nature of taking a like drawn written medium and putting it into a moving animated one that you're going to have to deal with that. I think that getting some of those like more like physical comedic beats in the storytelling fits really well with an animated form and doesn't necessarily hit as much in a webtoon manhwa form because it's a little bit trickier to get the timing of that comedy right because again a reader gets to choose their own pacing basically when they're reading through a comic as opposed to an animation where you literally have the time that we're taking with that particular piece of the storytelling. So far, I'm really enjoying it. I think that, again, that will depend on how we progress and how they continue to adapt it. I think that right now, it's probably a little bit easier for them to adapt stuff because there isn't as much going on. It isn't as, as dense in terms of plotting and world building. So it's a little bit easier for them to stick to the source material as opposed to later on, where there's just there's so much going on that I'm sure things are going to get left out of the adaptation just for the sake of runtime and them needing to fit the story within the constraints of the episodes, especially since I know that this, I think, has 13 episodes for the first season. So I feel like we're going to lose some stuff along the way just for time restraints. But so far, I'm really enjoying it. I hope you enjoyed watching that along with me. You can click this playlist to go and see my reaction to episode one, or you can subscribe to me next time I post a Tower of God reaction. I will see you in the next video. Bye.